That I do not know. I want to know. <laughs> That's scary. Okay. All right. We will call the finance committee meeting to order. Everybody have a chance to take a look at the minutes. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion and action on possible, or I'm sorry, discussion and possible action on claims in the amount of $194,221.51. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second to approve. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is approved. Discussion and possible action on approving regular operator's license applications for Kenneth Mershack, Logan Thurn, or Thien, rather, Marsha Decino, Taylor Stilwell, Nicholas Halverson, Lynn Haslip, Carolyn Francois, Connor Garrido, Abigail Gilbert, Fawn Beckman and Rebecca Thatcher. For the period of June 2nd, 2020 to June 30th, 2022, contingent upon a successful completion of a background check and payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city. Move to approve. Second. Motion second to approve discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion and possible action to approve the letter of engagement with Bolton and Mink in the amount of $11,900 for construction services for the 2020 street maintenance project. Good evening, Finance Committee. Michael Moraz, Director of Public Works. This is a letter of engagement to bring Bolton and Mink on board to provide the services related to the 2020 street maintenance program, which includes the crack filling and uh, chip sealing and fog sealing projects. Um, unfortunately, you know, um, contractors need to be watched, uh, even though they're, you know, professionals, just to make sure that they're doing what they said they're going to do. Um, and this LOE ensures that the city is getting um, what we paid for. Um, the inspector will be on site throughout the duration that they're in town, partner associates, uh, to make sure that they're applying the, you know, the correct amount of oil, the correct amount of rock, going the correct speeds routing all the cracks so on and so forth so um, that's what this letter of engagement is for funds for the to cover this cost would come out of the uh, 2020 street maintenance cip fund uh, following the approval of the contract with Farner, there's a remaining balance of sixty one thousand four hundred ninety four dollars and ten cents anybody move to approve second Motion and second to approve. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Uh, I don't have anything for future items. Anybody? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. We stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody.
We are going to call the council meeting to order. Everybody stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of America of the United States and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, take the roll. Mayor O'Connor. Here. Morissette. Here. Alms. Here. Dezeal. Here. Weber. Here. Atkins Hoggett. Can we see her? <laughs> In Hall. Here. Sarah. All right. Uh, we got public hearings. Public hearing on ordinance 09-20 uh, for a zoning map amendment from R1, one family residential to R2, two family residential for part of 497 Stage Line Road, Brian Martell. Is there anyone that is here for the public hearing? Anyone like to make a statement? <laughs> anyone like to make a statement? We can't, by the way, uh, for those people that are out there that might wanna say something, you, you might be muted. Uh, we don't have pictures of everybody here, so I can't see if you're raising your hand to be recognized. So if you do have something to say, first please unmute yourself and then just chime right on in. Uh, don't wait to be recognized, just chime in. Obviously, you know, we're still working through some of the technical issues on Zoom and uh, I guess protocol for Zoom. Uh, but uh, I will ask again, is there anyone that would like to make a comment on this? Move to close the public hearing. Second. second. Got a motion and second to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions approved. The public hearing is closed. Discussion of possible action on ordinance 09-20 for a zoning map amendment from R1, one family residential to R2, two family residential for part of 490, 497 Stage Line Road, Brian Martell. Thank you, Rich. Um, tonight, you will see in front of you uh, the applicant, Mr. Martell's application to split his property on 497 Stage Line Road into an east and west half. Um, for the western portion, he's looking to rezone it to R2 to family residential in order to construct a duplex or other sort of two family residential structure. Um, I don't believe he's going to be the one constructing it though. It's just gonna be, um, him selling the property for someone else to do that in his place. Um, zoning request is consistent with the 2030 comp plan land use designation of single to family residential. And a neighborhood meeting was held by Mr. Martell on February 21st. Um, you'll notice on the agenda too, there are a couple of other things to be talked about tonight regarding the splitting and such. But um, one more thing to note, is that for the driveway, um, he'll be removing the one that's currently there and moving it further eastward to get it further away from the intersection to allow for um, easier traffic flow or safer traffic flow. Um, so with that being said, um, if you have any, any questions, feel free to ask now. Anybody questions? I do. Uh, this is Bill. Um, uh, when you say move it east away from the intersection, you're just talking about the inlet into Red Cedar Canyon further away from that? Yeah, correct. Correct? Because that's not a good four way intersection mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I guess the only feedback I would have for Brian um, was just uh, the leadership within Red Cedar. Canyon community um, in terms of their entrance there. There's some old uh, old trees leading into Red Cedar. I don't know if you've been in touch with them at all or if they have reached out to you, Brian. It looks like you're muted. Sorry. Brian? Need to unmute. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh. Yeah, 
I, I guess I'm not sure what trees you're talking about, but um, I want to chime in on the the um, driveway. My current driveway would actually move west towards their entrance there. Two shares, the, the driveway would be shared and be closer to the end, the Red Cedar Canyon, than it is right now. Correct? Mm -hmm. Gary? Correct. So currently, uh, Mr. Martell lives in a single family home on the property. He has a driveway which would be on, I would say, the eastern quarter, Brian, of your property on the stage line. Yep. With this proposal, that existing driveway would go away, and with the property split, there would be a proposed, like uh, uh, Tiffany said, a, a proposed uh, duplex type structure, a twin home, that would share access with a newly located driveway, which would be approximately, I don't want to say, 50 to 100 feet further to the west. Um, on stage line, um, but that being okay. said, there would only be one driveway that would serve, I guess, what would be ultimately all three residences. That's how I understand it. Uh, I agree. So it doesn't look like, it doesn't sound like it's shifting all that much, but it is coming a little bit closer to that entrance for that inlet. Correct, and I, and I think we can work with this Martell and then and eventually whoever purchases the property, so whatever trees that might be with on private property, mm -hmm. um, that we can preserve what we can. Would that be agreeable, Brian? Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. I'll move to suspend the rules. Second. Second. Motion to second to suspend the rules. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dizio? You're muted, Paul. Let's assume he said huh. yes. Um, <laughs> yes sir. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggett? Yes. Ann Hall? Yes. Move to adopt. The motion is approved. Rules are suspended. Move to adopt Ordinance 9 20. Motion second. to adopt. Is, is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I'm sorry, sir, was that for or, or against? Oh, I was for, yes. Okay. All right, um, and then opposed, any opposed? All right, motion's approved. Discussion of possible action on a certified survey map from 497 Stage Line Road, Brian Martell. So similarly, uh, in relation to the last uh, item, this is for Martell's um, splitting of his property into the eastern and west portions. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second to approve. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is approved. Public hearing on Ordinance 10-20 and Ordinance 11-20 to amend Municipal Code to include Chapter 141, Short-Term Home Rentals, and Repeal Section 255-70, Bed and Breakfast Establishments. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone out there that would like to comment? Again, please unmute and just hop right in. Are there any comments? Any comments? Any comments? Move to close. Second. Motion is second to close. Uh, open hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion is approved. Public hearing is closed. Discussion of possible action on Ordinance 10 20 to amend Municipal Code to include Chapter 141 short term home rentals. Move to suspend rules. Second. Motion second to suspend the rules. Excuse me. Um, can you hear me? When you had 
Oh, somebody's talking. Yeah. Mary Ellen? Uh, what, what does that mean, suspend the rules? I'm sorry. Uh, in order for action to happen here this evening, we have to suspend the rules first because it hasn't had <clears throat> the requisite number of readings. So to suspend the rules would allow us to act on this tonight. Did you have a comment here, Mary Ellen? Well, we I talked to um, Tiffany and made some uh, comments. Um, did she pass those on? I talked yeah, to I, her last week. I can I can speak to that. We can suspend and then go on to discussion. Right. Yeah, and David can address that. Yeah. Okay. Address so, it now or? Well, there's a motion on the floor. Yeah, there's a motion on the floor. So we have a motion to suspend the rules right now, a motion to second. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dazeel? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggett? Yes. Ann Hall? Yes. I didn't realize it was going to be that tough. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Motions approved. Rules are suspended. David. So we, we did we did receive some comment uh, last week from from uh, Ms. Cox regarding uh, some opinions she had in regards to the draft uh, ordinance. Um, one of them, or actually all three of them, you know, we 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 uh, gave some good good thought to, and, and I think she had some good good recommendations. Uh, one was the the maximum occupancy. The language we had uh, in, the, in the draft ordinance was two per bedroom plus one, which will allow for some flexibility. You know, if a, if a couple had a had a had an infant with them, you know, they could they could have them themselves and a and their infant in the room. Um, but after some further thought, you know, it kind of lends itself to some confusion. Is it? Two per bedroom plus one for every bedroom, or two per bedroom plus one over the entire rental. So, I think just to avoid the confusion, I think that plus one, I think I think we've decided just to to let that go away. So the maximum occupancy would be uh, two per uh, every official bedroom in the rental unit. Uh, the other the other. Uh, item that was brought up was um, there there's a requirement for the, the short-term rental to contact uh, in in the draft it was everyone within 300 feet of the property which um, you know a three 300 foot radius turns into a big area and then that wasn't our intent um, you know so I think I think a hundred foot uh, distance from the property would be more more reasonable. Um, you, at 100 feet, you're still asking that um, short-term rental operator to probably notify, you know, 10 to 12 neighboring homes. Under the 300 feet, it would have been, you know, you know, might have been, you know, 20, 25, maybe even 30 homes. So, I think it's reasonable. The 100 feet is is, is reasonable. And then uh, there, there, uh, there was some concern about the language we were using for uh, the collecting the room tax. You know, essentially, um, you know, s some uh, short-term rental properties may be using a, a, a software vendor and, and not necessarily a internet marketplace uh, to do their bookings. You know, so, so just to be more consistent with state statute um, you know, we're making the recommendation to change um, what we drafted as a, a booking service to a um, to be more consistent with the state what did they call it here a lodging marketplace so that that's language right out of the state statute I think that we should change to What's Can I just logic? say something here? I beg your pardon? Can I say something to that? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, just to make it a little bit more clear, 
And when I talked to Chip about Ellen, this. Mary Ellen, could you I, identify yourself, please? Can I what? Identify yourself, name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, Mary Ellen Cox. And my husband Richard is right here too. We own the Phipps Inn Bed and Breakfast. Okay. Third Street. Okay. Um, the Airbnbs, Booking.com, Expedia, those kinds of marketing um, entities that people use, and sometimes B and Bs use them. We do not use them, um, but. We could, but we don't. They're called OTAs, or online travel agencies. And they actually collect the money from the guests, and then they um, take a fee out, and then they pay the, the um, property owners. We don't use that. What we use is called a property management system. Ours is called Reservation Nexus. There are others called Think Reservation and, and some other names. And all they do, they don't advertise for us like Airbnb advertises, BNB, booking.com advertises for the owners. Our systems don't advertise for us. They collect the information from the guests and they pass it on to us. And we collect the money and then we pay sales tax and room tax. So I, I haven't looked at the state statute that you were talking about, but I just want to make it clear that um, not everyone uses those OTAs or those online systems um, to that collect the money and then pass it on. So um, we've been here 20 years. We've never used one of those. I've paid my room tax and my sales tax on time every time for 20 years, and I don't have it go through another system. So I just want to make that clear to somebody in case they're wondering about that. What's the issue? Well, the definition in the statute is the, the term they use in the room tax statute is lodging marketplace. That's an entity that provides a platform through which an unaffiliated third party offers to rent a short-term rental to an occupant and collects the consideration for the rental from the occupant. So for those types, and I assume that's what the online services that uh, online she's talking about. Agencies. If they're collecting the rent, they're supposed to also collect the room tax at that time, and they are then responsible, this platform of paying that room tax to the city. That's my understanding that's of it. That's correct. I just wanted to make clear that um, what we use and um, what is different from that. Yes. I think she's if you're collecting your own rent and you're paying your own uh, room tax, you can continue to do that. The ordinance just makes it clear that people who use these uh, third party bookings that actually collect the rent are required to collect the room tax as well and then to pay the room tax to the city. Correct, right. David? Right, the, the ordinance allows for, for both, both scenarios. The, the owner, if, like in their case, mm -hmm. is collecting uh, the rent, they're required to pay, pay the room tax and the sales tax. If they're using a, a, a lodging marketplace, an, an online, Facilitator, they, they, uh, that that company is going to be required to pay pay the taxes. I could give you all a, a session like an insurance class on OTAs. It's no fun, but I don't understand. <laughs> Aaron, what were you going to say? I just think she's trying to explain that they don't use them, and I think that's what uh, right. that's what Kathy was trying to say is that even if you don't use them. You know, it's okay. It's you not don't a have, You don't have no, to use them does. underneath this. Right. Yes. That's all. I just want to make sure we can understand it. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. That's fine. But if they do, can I say, she just can wanted I say to one clarify more thing? that. Yeah. It's. I, I have a lot of. This is Mary Ellen again. I have a lot of B and B friends, and and they do use the OTAs, and it's um. They they have a regular B and B like we do, but then they also use OTAs, and it's um, like pulling teeth. To get the OTAs to do what you say in the ordinance they want to want that you want them to do. I'm just saying that as an aside. 
that it's, it's going to be difficult and maybe that's a good thing. Um, but, you know, I'm just saying it's, um, these are big entities out there and they don't want to, they don't want to pay $20 in room tax to Hudson. They don't want to do that. Uh, that's all I had. Okay. Anybody? I will we approve with the changes presented by David Gray, uh, approving ordinance, uh, was it 10-20? Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion's approved. Discussion of possible action on Ordinance 11 20 to repeal Section 255 70 bed and breakfast establishments. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion is second to suspend the rules. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dizio? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggett? Yes. Hall? Yes. Motion is approved. Rules suspended. Move to adopt Ordinance 11 20. Second. Motion is second to adopt. Further discussion? Can I ask what this This is Mary Ellen again, Mary Ellen Cox. Can I ask what this means? This it, it just means that uh, the bed and breakfasts are now under the Hudson City Code defined as a short term rental. They come within under that definition, so we have eliminated the section of the code that used to treat them differently. Okay, that's what I thought it meant. I just wanted some clarification. Okay, good. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Citizen comments. Again, uh, this is a portion of the agenda for citizens to make a comment on anything that they would like, uh, as long as it's not on the agenda for the evening. If it is on the agenda, please save your comments for that item uh, when it hits uh, on the agenda. If you do have a comment, please unmute yourself. And just chime in because, like I said, we don't have a picture of everybody out there, so I can't see if you're raising your hand. Are there any citizen comments? <clears throat> any citizen comments? Any citizen comments? Hearing none, we'll portion. It will close that portion of the agenda. Consent agenda. Approve the meeting minutes from May 18th, 2020 regular council meeting. Approve the claims in the amount of $194,221.51. Approve the annual renewal liquor license application. Can you pull that one, Becky? Yep. Thank you. Um, place on file public utilities 2020 first quarter report. Approve operator's license on the list sheet. Approval of the preliminary and final plat map for Summer Prairie, the extraterritorial zone, Town of Hudson at 726 County Road N, Yurchins LLC, Richard Stout. I'm not sure the volume. Approval of the letter of engagement with Bolton and Menck in the amount of $11,900 for construction services on the 2020 Street Beacons Project. Perfect. Good. Approval of a fence easement agreement for 317 Canyon Boulevard, Jason Stoll and approval of the DPUC appointments. She's, she's done. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve. Roll call. One was pulled, wasn't it? Yes, letter letter C oh. was pulled. Yep, I'm sorry. Um, so motion uh, and second to approve minus the one that was pulled. Again, roll call. 
Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dazeal? Yes. Weber? Yes. Ekins Hoggett? Yes. Paul? Yes. Motion is approved. Consent agenda is approved. And what item was it? C. Uh, except for item C. Item C, Paul. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure exactly how to, to state it well, but the concern I have with um, some of the establishments downtown uh, since they've opened is some are seem to be complying better than others with the St. Croix County uh, health advisory that was issued a few uh, weeks ago. So just my question is if, uh, and I know this is really difficult to uh, enforce and I realize we want to keep a vibrant downtown, so um, it's certainly not um, an attack on the downtown at all. But what I'm trying to figure out is, um, is there a way over the next two weeks we could uh, sort of do, uh, I don't know if inspection is the correct word, but if we could try to figure out uh, which uh, of the liquor license uh, establishments listed on the sheet seem to be doing a better job with some of the social distancing pieces. Um, and I don't know if that's a question for David Gray um, or who would get at that from the city standpoint. Well, just as, as it relates to renewal of a liquor license, um, we can't just choose not to renew a liquor license unless there's one of the stated causes in the statute. There's got to be a violation of an ordinance. Um, there's a number of things in the statute, and then you have to go through notice and hearing. So um, we don't, well, neither the county nor we have a, an ordinance regarding the recommendations for, you know, COVID uh, type stuff. If you want to get to what you're looking for, Paul, that's where we talk about the emergency declaration being approved and then emergency ordinances being implemented. And that's where you get to try to get to something like that. But we can't tie it to the liquor licenses now because we have nothing, as yeah. Kathy said, in our ordinance as far as liquor license requirements that relate at all to the county uh, guidelines. I don't we think really don't have any, any legal standing to even um, sort of inspect or investigate because it's not a county ordinance is that correct i think the the approach the council decided on last time was to try to educate and promote and encourage them to look at the edc you know things for their particular type of business and so forth so but the but the short answer is yeah no we can't we have no legal standing to do inspections okay thanks for the clarification yep my opinion, I think that's a wrong kind of thinking in the position that we are in. So I'll move that we approve this item on consent. The annual liquor license. We have a motion to approve by item C. Second. Motion and second to approve. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion of possible action on allowing events to be held in the city of Hudson through August 8th, 2020. So we've got a list that was in the uh, agenda packet and we can I can give a few updates on it. Um, some of these are, the, the status is still unknown because they're trying to figure out what they want to do um, and they're not quite sure yet. But Riverfest has announced that they want to, they're going to greatly reduce what they're planning. I mean, they're talking about basically a cleanup and if they decide to do a concert, they're going to let us know, come back with that. They're going to have, um, you know, they would come back with a plan for spacing and things like that. Otherwise, right now, they think it's basically going to be all virtual. Um, so they're really not going to have anything there. The longer table has been canceled. Uh, note that the River City Corral is canceled. Um, but other than, um, note the National Night Out is still considering it, although they're out a little bit further still. Um, but we reached out to all of them today again just to verify where they're at. And a lot of them are still like, we're not quite sure yet, we don't really know. So that's kind of the update of where we're at right now. Um, but I guess the conversation we just had wanted to have with the council, this was brought up last meeting, was for the ones that do decide to move forward, what we've asked from them is before their event that they provide us with some sort of plan about how they will try to meet the county guidelines. It's not something that 
it's a requirement or anything at this point. It's just, hey, if it, 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 give us an idea of what you're thinking, how you're going to do it sort of thing. But again, most of these are pretty far out, so we haven't got anything from them yet on, on that. Um, but the only, um, the only one that's kind of coming up that we really have some direct involvement in is the fireworks. Um, so I guess what I, we have kind of two things tonight. One, for, for all the things that we're talking about, I guess what I would say for now is if you have any sort of comfort level with allowing events to continue like this, to let, let's let it continue for now, letting them all know that they have to get us some more information back at some point before their event for the council to review and, and look at and, and sign off on. Um, but the one that, the other one that I would look at is, is the fireworks. What do we want to do with that? That is the one that we have direct control over. Um, so that's one where I'd like to have conversation about do we want to continue with the fireworks or not? Um, one of the things that we have talked about with the fireworks is that if we did do it, um, staff would put together a plan um, about how we would do our best to stay within the county guidelines. Um, there's some very good ideas out there from other communities um, that have done other events already like this where they um, you know, basically set up certain areas within parks where as a family you can you sit in this area the next family sits in this area you have them spaced out you have these nice circles um, kind of basically spray painted on the grass um, those sort of things you can do the same with chalk on the hard surfaces but you basically identify areas where here you go here you go here you go here everybody keeps six feet apart enjoy your show um, I did reach out to the League of Wisconsin Municipalities listserv um, it's not you know a scientific survey but um, I did hear back from roughly eight cities that are still continuing with their 4th of July parade, their 4th of July fireworks, things like that. Um, but you don't get a universal response. You basically get whatever administrators feel like responding that day will respond to you. So um, I do know that there are other cities that are moving forward with their events. Um, so we would not be the only one still, still doing their event. Um, but if the council decided to do it, um, we would, as staff, put together a plan to help do what we can to um, meet the county guidelines as part of it. I mean, there's not going to be any guarantee that we can. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have, we'll have, the, we'll have um, things laid out, but you know, if somebody's on a sidewalk, if somebody is, you know, sitting at one of our restaurants and they're all sort of seeing, we're not going to, it is what it is. But for what we can control within our parks, we will definitely lay out a, a system where people can come and enjoy it in a safe manner as possible. Um, if the council decides to move forward with it. So. Are you thinking signage as well? Yeah, we, we'd want to, we'd have a lot of signage up talking about, please stay within your circles. Um, if you can't find a spot, we recommend you go watch here. And we have multiple parks, it's, you know, like we talked about, you don't just necessarily watch at a beachfront, you could be at Prospect, you could be at other places. So we'll try to get a lot of educational stuff out with it as well um, to, to help with that. But yeah, we would definitely be looking at signage to help people understand here's what we're, our expectations are for it. Yeah, so. and Referring to the St. Croix County or to the six yep. foot distancing, at least that's probably the main thing that can be yep. done. Yeah. So at least you're signing the parks and doing what you can. I would be in favor of doing it because I think that it's, a, well, for one, it's a huge tradition, it's a celebration, but maybe also give a sense of normalcy back to the community a little bit. So if, if we do these guidelines and follow as best we can, I, I'm in favor of it. I think my concern is that uh, we, we know that Stillwater has already canceled theirs and that I'm not sure about Woodbury and, and that our crowd may be much larger than it has been in the past if we might be one of the few uh, large fireworks. We have a, we have, we draw a big crowd already so uh, it may be way more than, than we anticipate and that's we need to think about that number. What can we handle? Well, of course, Stillwaters was scheduled for the fourth or scheduled on a different day than ours anyway. Right, but it's, it's you know, ours is, well, are we gonna to go to Stillwater? Are we gonna to go to Hudson? Are we gonna to go to Woodbury? You know, you, you pick and choose which, which fireworks display you may wanna to go to. And, that's and if there aren't any other fireworks in the area um, over, that, over that weekend, then we will attract a lot more people. Will we be able to handle the, the crowds and be able to maintain social distancing if we have a large number of people show up? Yeah, that's, that's thank you, Joyce. That's exactly what I was thinking, that it may overwhelm us. I'm going to make the motion to cancel the fireworks. I'll second that motion. 
Well, uh, all right, we have a motion and a second to cancel. Uh, my question, Aaron, what is, it, what is the uh, drop dead date for us to cancel a contract? We don't really have a drop dead date with it. They're pretty flexible. I mean, they'd like as much notice as possible, but they're, they're fairly flexible with it. Um, but I think it's noted there too, if we do cancel, we do have to pay the penalty on it, um, the 25% penalty as well. But um, yeah, we, it's not like they're saying we have to make it, but they would like as much lead time as possible. So they have time to try to reschedule and do other things with it too. So, so we got information from the uh, from the vendor today or yesterday, well, it must have been today. Just today. The yeah. person that we have the contract with that um, we had, I had requested that we find out if in fact, they, of course, they're booked on the 4th, they're booked for a number of different uh, events throughout that whole period, that if they did get canceled on for their fourth event, that we uh, might be able to switch hours to the 4th instead of the 5th. And we heard back today, they're the deadline for that organization, whichever one it is, and that organization is in Minnesota, their deadline for canceling was today, and the vendor told us that they have not canceled, that they do intend to go forward with theirs. And in fact, they have a number of uh, people that have canceled, had canceled their events, and are now calling him back to reschedule because they want, to, they, they believe that they're able to handle this with, uh, with uh, proper distancing and safety for the, for the people. So I think that plays into this as well. I agree with Randy 100%. I think that, that this brings some sense of community back here and some sense of normalcy in our community. I think that we do have uh, a, a way to monitor this and a way to enforce what we want down there as far as distancing. I've seen some of the same things that Aaron was talking about where they have the little target circles out in the different uh, picnic areas and parks for different events including fireworks. And I just, and, and by the way, I'm hearing from a lot of people when they heard that the booster days were canceled, they said, whatever you do, please do not cancel the fireworks for the same reasons that were just expressed by, by Randy earlier. So if you are of the mind to cancel, I would say at least wait until the next, uh, next meeting because uh, we don't have a deadline. We're gonna pay a penalty no matter what, uh, but give you guys a chance to think about this for a little bit and maybe talk to your constituents, but I really think that we should try to proceed with this. I'm Any intrigued by the possibilities that, that Aaron described, but I'm, I'm really curious if we could estimate what we would be able to handle in terms of a, of a crowd and, 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 and believe that it's going to be significantly higher than it ever has been. And that's, if you've been down there, uh, and I have been down there. Usually, I'm selling raffle tickets, but uh, it's a it's a zoo. There are a lot of people there, and it's a great thing. It's a great event. Well, keep in mind, a lot of the people that are there are there for the booster days too, and just wander yes. over to, to right. Watch they just the... fit together. So uh, we I will agree, have, we but will you know, we've space. got a lot of people without booster days. There might just be a lot of people that don't show up because they're not into the fireworks necessarily, and there's no carnival there. I guess for, for my two cents, I, you know, it's outdoors, so that's an advantage for safety. I think we can do this sort of prom uh, promote the sort of social distancing that Aaron was talking about. The factor that I would like to, I would like to not have to vote on this tonight because the other factor I think we have to consider is infection rates for St. Croix County, which are coming out weekly. And we're still just trying to figure out with Wisconsin opening, where are we going? So I think it's wise right now to probably not make a decision tonight and to let the data come out over the next two weeks because if the data will kind of tell us, I think, if it's going to be a safe event to do on a larger scale or not. So my thought would be let's, let's let the data help us make that decision. What criteria would you suggest that we um, use as a cutoff or um, how would you want the, to analyze the, the data before making a decision? I think that's a really good question. I think, you know, right now I'm just looking at numbers, total infections. We're looking at um, where it's been over the last few weeks. And we haven't really talked about this as a council, but at some point, you know, in the back of my mind, I, I'm still thinking about 
the data with eventually we may have to declare a state of emergency at some point. Um, I don't have a magic number, Joyce, but what I want to kind of do is look at the curve and where the curve's going, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a little bit of time to figure that out. So um, that's just my suggestion. I think it will, it will help us. If the data is, if the infections are really going up since we reopened, then I think it's probably something we don't want to get into. If we're holding our own, um, that's something we might be able to do safely. So the data just, just came out today from the state of Wisconsin of 2.3, the lowest it's ever been, and that's after we've been open wide open. Okay. All right, we've got a motion and second in front of us. May, may I add a comment? Um, I'm. I guess I am willing to wait a couple weeks and look at that data. Um, I also would like to look at data from Minnesota because those are the people that are going to be coming here. If you know, since yes. they are canceling theirs, so I, I don't just want to focus on what's happening to our county. I think we really have to look at who we're inviting in as well. And um, about that, Aaron, I'd I'd be very in interested in having someone have a discussion with that company because. You know, I've I've made commitments to trade shows and travel and all kinds of things this year, and um, every every one of these commitments I've made, the companies are allowing me to back out due to COVID. So that 25% I find um, very unusual in today's environment, um, and maybe you know we could uh, ask them politely to um, you know to not charge us that this this go around, um, maybe let us apply that or whatever you know, to next year's to make that commitment. But if they're not willing to go with 0% uh, of a penalty, um, I mean, is that really the company we want to do business with given that this is, you know, dealing with people's health and well-being? I, I don't know. Maybe we could find someone else or take proposals for next year. Or just let them know we're going to take proposals for next year. Might be a enough to make that 25% uh, fee go away. We can try. I'll, with, I'll withdraw my motion and um, I will um, make the motion to postpone this to, ne to our next meeting. I would second that proposal. All right, we've got a motion and a second to postpone until the next meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion's approved. All right. Uh, discussion of possible action on an exception to the temporary annexation moratorium ordinance 18 19 to allow. Wait, wait a minute. Be before we move on, um, don't we have the Hill City Church Service request to discuss? Oh, okay. Well, so there's a number of other requests still existing on there as of right now. Um, the only one that's coming up anytime soon is the Hill City Church Service. Um, after that, the next soonest one is um, really the Halos event, which like I said, they still haven't made their decision on. We should get that soon from them. Riverfest has basically greatly reduced everything down. They don't really, besides some river cleanup, they don't really see anything that's going to be in person. Um, so really, all, I guess all, you know, now that we've got more information, all we're kind of asking is, I think, big picture, are you okay with events moving forward? Um, at all and if you are are you okay if we ask them just to give us updated plans about what they how they'll address the county guidelines so you can take a look at them um, and, and sign off on them that way um, so then you're not just doing a blanket closing of everything but looking at it kind of on a case-by-case -case basis um, so I don't know if the, if the council's okay with that strategy the only one that then you really need to talk to talk about is the Hill City Church Service and they did do a new request so if you look in the packet, basically they're saying that they're a small group and they'll have they'll make sure that all families are at least 10 to 15 away from, feet away from each other. So they're they have a plan set up where it's a, they're a small group, a uh, small church, um, and their services are fairly small. So they will be they'll be doing them with almost double uh, over double the social distancing recommendations of the county. Um, so I guess at this point. If you're okay with events, as long as you feel comfortable with them, I would say the only one you have to really talk about is Hill City, and their plan seems to be pretty good if you're okay with it to sign off on that one. 
I, I do like that. If I understand their idea, it's they're trying to get to an outdoor space, which for their church should be a safer way to worship. So I think that's a good move right. on their part. I am on, I'm Jennifer Rudy. I'm on to representing Hill City. So if there's any questions tonight, please um, feel free to ask. Okay, thank you. And do you know how many folks here would be, be expecting at the um, outdoor services? We're guessing it would be pretty minimal. We have done um, some questioning of the members on who is comfortable. I'm guessing, I can't say for sure, but it would definitely not be over 100. Um, if there is any restrictions, we will have an RSVP program, so we know exactly how many members will be coming. So. For the first um, Sunday we do this, if we happen to get too many people over our comfort level, we will be working on an RSVP program where it will be under a certain amount of people to make sure that we can safely hold the services. What time will, you, uh, will the service actually start? At 10 a.m. And how will you mark the lawn so that people know where to uh, center their families? We were planning on having um, like an usher type system so that people, our church is very small, so it would not be very hard to um, go about this. But if um, we're working, once this is approved, we will go forward and put a lot more effort into the specifics of how we are going to locate all the families, but we would like every family 10 to 15 feet apart. And we think that that space is gonna be perfect for us to be able to do that. Um, whether we have to put you know, X's down or something of that nature, it will be pretty easy to execute. But we will have some plans in place as far as that goes. So just a question for Erin and for Kathy, if you guys can, can weigh in a little bit here. Are we talking about we would uh, each event this summer we would basically uh, approve or vote on? And then the question for Kathy is are we on good legal grounds if we say yes to some and no to others? Well, we do have a special events ordinance and we would just go through that. Um, depending on the number of people involved, I don't recall. Well, I mean, we uh, there exactly are there are parks, so we have the control. We have our you know special events policy where people apply and things like that. But you know, basically, you you kind of approve them now on a case by case basis, really. Yes. Um, so this is no different than how we usually do it. It's just now maybe instead of looking at other criteria, this time we're looking more at how can they have their event as safely as possible. Um, so it's, it's no different than how you've approved all the other ones. It's just that you're looking at it a little differently now than when you were approving them before. That sounds good to me. So are you looking for approval, Aaron? Do we need a motion? I, I would like to see, for tonight, the only one that we need approval for is that Hill City Church Services. Um, the other ones, like I said, are basically all canceled up until the halos in August 1st, and they're going to get us an updated plan if they decide to move forward that we'll have time to approve well before their event. So hopefully by, they'll know by next meeting if they're gonna hold it, and then we'll get a plan from them by then. I would make the motion to approve the Hill City Church services that are listed on the sheet. Second. Got a motion I'd like second. to ask you to amend the motion um, to say that um, uh, subsequent um, services have to um, adhere to any guidelines that staff may um, give them for maintaining social distancing or you know address any problems that should come up you place it so just that they I'd have... like to add... go ahead sorry Joe. Um, I was just gonna make a comment that would it be possible just to approve the first two and we can look at how the results came in at our next meeting. I know that they will want to plan ahead for all four, but um, if the numbers go skyrocketing and um, in the next couple of weeks, and if they somehow attract it's such a crowd that they can't rightfully, you know, do it safely, I think it would be our responsibility to to maybe 
say the next couple aren't going to happen. So I would just like maybe let's see what happens these first two, and then at our next meeting go ahead and approve the next two based on those two things, where the numbers are at with cases and how they did the first two weeks. One thing I can say too is even if you approve all four and something changes, so like if we get the updated county data, you know we have a big surge, things thing, things go down hill quickly. As we did with all of our other existing per, per, uh, permits that we had for like late April, May, we have the right within our policy to cancel events if needed for whatever reason. So I guess I would say that anything that you do approve, no matter when it's out there, if things change, and unfortunately the way things are going right now, things seem to change rather quickly. Um, but if they do change, um, you do still have the right, approved or not, to cancel that event um, based on new information. I would accept both uh, friendly amendments that were added. Uh, all right, so relative to that, the, we what was need the, to so the first the first yeah. one was basically that if staff after the first event or two would make some requests of them to to improve the process that we that we see fit that they have to abide by that which would be the case anyways right um, oh and then the other one would be is that um, review it after two times re review it after two and make sure it's going okay um, I would say well yeah we'll review it at our next council meeting and we'll let you know how it's going at that point in time then so Bill, do you accept those two so are you saying your Paul you said that you'll accept both uh, friendly changes was right. one of the changes that you're only authorizing the first two, or are we authorizing the first four with review period? Well, my understanding is we're authorizing the first two now, and then we would revisit this uh, at our next meeting with, you know, future ones. Well, that's just one of the amendments then, Paul. Right, but the other one was the staff one. Yeah, so correct. But you're taking well, both those of are them. The, those are the two I want to take right now. You're taking them both, okay. Yeah, taking and them both. Bill, are you okay with that? Sure. Okay. Jim, do you have something to say? No, I was just wanting to make sure that we have given staff enough direction and authority to where they don't get between a rock and a hard, hard spot on this. Right. We got it. Okay. Got Anybody it. else? What's the difference between this church group and fireworks? Just an anecdotal question. Yeah. All right. So, anybody else? Anybody else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Uh, all right. Discussion of possible action on an exception to the temporary annexation moratorium ordinance 18-19 to allow Hudson physicians to submit an annexation petition at St. Croix County tax parcel 020-1083-90-000 and 020-104, I'm sorry, 1084-00-000. Thank you. Uh, as the uh, the agenda statement says, uh, Hudson Physicians has entered into a purchase agreement for approximately 15 acres of property on the east side of Carmichael Road, uh, approximately directly across the road from uh, the old golf course clubhouse. Um, they have desires to construct a approximately 90,000 square foot facility um, and take their existing practice and move it there and um, uh, provide some additional services and, and opportunities uh, for their clients' health. So uh, this was presented to the plan commission approximately a month, month and a half ago. Uh, the plan commission recommends uh, the approval of the exception to the moratorium. Um, Council will remember that we did something similar for Faith Community Church um, a few meetings, meetings ago. Um, uh, this one's similar. I think uh, the justification there as listed on the, the issue sheet um, for the uh, provision of health care and expanded health care options for our community is, is a positive thing. Um, and with that, um, the, the plan commission recommends it for approval. I, I have a comment to make just they're asking us for an exception but I have talked to a lot of constituents about the, some of the practices of customer service with Hudson physicians 
and how uh, if there's an outstanding bill they can't be seen and they're forced to go to the ER it could be a ten dollar bill it could be a hundred dollar bill it's awfully nice to want to ask for an exception for something but if one of their customers has an outstanding bill and is really sick where's the exception for that customer I think some practices of community and customer service need to be addressed with the Hudson physicians before I could really entertain possibly the exception to this I think there's really some little a lot of negative with Hudson physicians and how they treat their customers and it's all about the almighty dollar just a thought anybody I really like the idea and I have no problem with um, moving forward to try to annex that land I think it's a good plan um, I don't know if it's a um, do we need to suspend rules or we just need the motion I think we need to suspend the rules where it's an exception to an ordinance Ken. okay I would move to suspend the rules I mean we don't have a procedure for that but if you want to that's fine <laughs> uh, is there a second to that second all right, we have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Roll call. Marset? No. Alms? Yes. Tazio? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggett? Yes. And Hall? Yes. All right, motion to approve rules is suspended. Uh, move to approve the annexation. No, it well just exemption. Or to the exception of the annexation. Right. I'm not yeah. sure how it's worded on the sheet. <laughs> exception to the moratorium. Yes. Exception to the moratorium. Thank you. I have a couple questions on the. Uh, there, was there a second? Second. Okay. Do I have a couple questions? Go ahead. First, first of all, do we have a time frame? I, I haven't. I've read through that once, and I didn't, don't recall seeing anything that gives us a time frame, which is probably pretty important relative to what we're doing there. Good question. I think they they, they do want to move forward relatively quickly. Uh, but that being said, obviously we have to go through, and we'll discuss in the next item, but go through the capital cost study and the budget study. So, you know, necessary improvements to Carmichael, um, deferred assessments, identifying all those, um, some of the traffic stuff, obviously you see in the concepts that they've included, um, you see how it ties into that preferred alternative plan for uh, the redevelopment of, or the reconstruction of exit two. So we have to work through all those items and then um, obviously after that, then we'll be looking at um, a time frame that I, I, would, I would imagine relatively quickly, probably this fall. Okay, you answered, you answered my second question right away, Mike. Uh, but I, I would make a comment that I, as I was thinking about this is that what we're doing is diverting some traffic from the um, south side of the freeway to the north side of the freeway. Just kind of flipping it over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't see that as having a tremendous influence on on the, on the exit as it stands. Well, and I think it, it, regardless of of this project or any other project, is that we need to make sure that whatever we do doesn't impede or interfere with what we know is going to be the ultimate build out of both Carmichael Road and Exit Two. Absolutely. And that's what. The second phase or the, the next step is what you're talking about, is how we make sure that happens correctly? Yeah. Yep. It was a good introduction to the next agenda item. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Nope. Motion is approved. Discussion of possible action on a pre-annexation agreement between the City of Hudson, Wisconsin and Hudson Physicians for an annexation proposal. And again, this is, uh, we kind of talked about it, but this uh, obviously provides a financial security and escrow for uh, SEH to complete uh, the capital cost study um, and budget analysis like we do with, with every annexation. 
I'd move to approve the pre-annexation agreement. Second. Motion is second for approval. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Nope. Motion is approved. Discussion and possible discussion and approval. This is discussion and possible approval <laughs> of Magni Construction. That was good good writing there. I was uh, <laughs> discussion and, and possible approval of Magni Construction Inc. for wastewater treatment plant improvements. Uh, Kip Peters, utility director. Um, I, I actually I like that writing where it's just going to be approved and we're just going to move forward with this. So uh, just a quick recap here on March 4th, uh, we opened bids for the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we had two bidders. Uh, both bids came in uh, way higher than, than uh, what we had anticipated with the engineer's estimate. Uh, it went to uh, the utility commission. At that point, the utility commission rejected both bids and authorized uh, uh, the utility and SEH to go out for rebid. So we did rebid on that. Uh, Thursday, March 21st, we opened bids. We actually, we had five bids at this point. So all of this is in your packet. Uh, we had five bidders um, uh, at that opening. So with that, Magni Construction was the low bid at $10,055,600. Um, so we, then at that point, it did go to the Utility Commission for approval. Uh, the Utility Commission did approve Maggie Construction uh, for the $10,055,600 um, uh, with a total construction cost of $12,775,890. And I just want to point out that with the, with the rebidding, uh, we are actually looking at a savings from, from the first round to the second round with the lower bids. We're looking at a $377,520 savings on this project from first round to second round. So, but we are recommending uh, approval of maybe construction at the cost of $10,055,600 with a total construction cost of $12,775,890. And I do, uh, uh, John Friel, and Brendan Willihan are on the are on the, the meeting here. Uh, they are the engineers that, that have designed this project from the start. So if there is any questions uh, for me or for the engineers, um, we'd be happy to answer them. Move to approve. Second. Motion second to approve. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motions, I'm sorry, somebody opposed to that or just get in late on the approval? Did anybody oppose that? No? Okay. Uh, all right, motions approved. Discussion of possible action on resolution 12 20 delegating authority for premises extension and street closure. So this one got brought up as back when COVID was our biggest issue um, that uh, with you know some of the restaurants opening and things like that they do want to um try and figure out ways that they can work within the county guidelines as best as possible um, and to do that it may mean getting creative with where they do their seating and things of that nature where you know as of right now unless it's something that we've already approved through our uh, liquor licensing process as far as their premise and things like that that's the only place that they can serve um, but what we're looking at is as you've seen on the minnesota side where it's a little more um, prevalent there now because their approval effective today was that they can only have outdoor seating and many of the restaurants in minnesota didn't have it so places are getting creative like still water where they're allowing um, seating on in on the parking lanes on streets and things like that so just we haven't gotten any formal requests yet but we wanted to just have it set up where if we got formal requests for um, say a restaurant to allow for some parking say in the rear if they have some space available even like off an alley or something like that or um, if possibly on a side street on a area that they wanted to maybe use a couple parking spaces that maybe would make sense there with low traffic things like that um, if they wanted to expand their seating out into a sidewalk area as long as we could still allow for proper access through the sidewalk area that staff could review it 
Chief of Police would review it, Public Works would review it, we'd take a look at it. it. Would allow us the opportunity to give it the okay, and then we'd bring those back to the council at their next meeting for official approval. But that way, if somebody, say, applies tomorrow, they're not waiting two weeks, and then they have to plan, and then they're really not up and running for a month. Um, this gives them the opportunity at least to say, hey, staff is supportive of this, it makes sense, we check all the boxes, go ahead, and then it'll come back to the council. And for some reason, at that point, the council doesn't like it, the business knows that it potentially could be denied later. Um, but it just gives some flexibility. I don't know that we'll get requests, um, but I, I'm assuming it's possible that we might. Um, and like I said, we would review all the requests, you know, through um, the, the, um, the police department, through our public works, or everybody, just to make sure, is it safe? Does it make sense? Can we do this right? And that controlled sort of thing. access. Controlled access, that sort of thing. Operators so, on... Yep, operators would have to be outside. So, you know, the city clerk would be involved in making sure that, you know, the usual liquor laws are being enforced, can be enforced with it where we have operators and things like that. So um, it would just give staff the ability to take a look, sign off on it, and then bring it back to you later and, and get the official approval from the council at a later date. Okay. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion to second to suspend. Roll call. Morris that? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dizio? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggett? Yes. And Hall? Yes. Motions approved. Rules are suspended. Move to adopt resolution 12 20 um, with one change um, where it says be it further resolved that all premise expansions so granted shall be reported to the Common Council at their next meeting, next regular meeting. I'd like to ch change that to shall be reported to the Common Council. Um, I don't know how you want to word that, uh, Kathy, but... Um, how it's worded. Quickly, uh, you know... Well, next regular meeting would be the either the first or third Monday. Right, but I, I'd, like it that, I'd like it in there that she it'll be it reported to the council right away, but oh, I placed see. on the next um, consent agenda at the next regular meeting. So you'd want to be informed before? Correct. Uh, just as they're approved? I mean, that can be yes. on just an email or whatever? Yes, that would be and, fine. Okay. Sure. Second. All right, motion second. Everybody got the uh, the uh, adopt or amended language. Everybody good. All yep. those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion's approved. All right. Um, as far as any comments, communications from me. First of all, I want to thank and congratulate our Chief of Police, Jeff Willems, uh, County Sheriff Scott Knutson, uh, for the fabulous work they did over the weekend. Um, it was long for them. They had very, very long hours. Uh, they did a great job. I want to thank all the surrounding communities that brought their law enforcement people into our community to help us out. It was noticed widely Everybody I talked with uh, appreciated the additional support that we had, the additional presence of the police officers that we had throughout the city. And like I said, it was noted widely. Everybody saw it and everybody appreciated it. So thank you, Chief Willems, uh, for all that you did uh, throughout this weekend to keep our community safe. Uh, it was a yeoman's job and you really, really uh, stood up and, and um, you need to take a lot of credit for what happened here over the weekend. So thank you for that. I also want to commend uh, Governor Evers office, specifically Jamie Kuhn, uh, his chief of staff for staying in touch with us throughout uh, the weekend. And uh, I, want to, uh, I want to go on record in thanking them for uh, staying in touch with us and staying on top of the situation that we had here in Hudson. Anybody else? I got a lot of questions about the process that was followed on this. Um, it's not on the agenda. Can you expand on the the process that uh, for the decision to request National Guard presence? I'm getting uh, Kathy. You want I think it should be put on the next agenda so, so that it's noticed properly. Just a discussion okay. and review of like the process to. for. 
contacting the governor and whatever you would like. But I'd like to to have a substantive discussion. I don't think would be appropriate. Add okay, to the then next let's do that, please. Um, I'd like to request the add to the agenda for our next meeting. Uh, I guess the irresponsible actions of some council members on sensitive information that was leaked on social media. I'd like to have that on our next agenda, either closed session to talk about that or not. Uh, they, it was inexcusable to have some things put out on social media like they were. As public safety chairman, I was uh, very disheartened. I have um, a question for Aaron and Kathy. Um, another topic, I've been asked uh, by a number of people to have the city enact a mask ordinance um, for the duration of the pandemic. Um, could you please um, just give an overview of what that would, um, how that would be done and so that the public understands how this would be handled? Again, that any substantive discussion on it would need to be put on the next agenda. We, I mean, I'm not asking done. for a discussion, just for a, an explanation. Would that well, be all right? Uh, first of all, I, I'm not prepared to do that, and I don't have any definitive information. And just providing information is, it's got to be noticed. Okay, then let's put that on the next agenda too, please. Okay. Anybody else? Move to adjourn. Second. A motion second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion's approved. <laughs>